Okay, hi. So it's Carrie Johnston, and I am broadcasting today from the traditional territory of Champaign and Ajac First Nations in beautiful Dakota Haines Junction. And I'm joined today by Amanda Partridge, who is the owner of Elements Hair Studio and Day Spa in Whitehorse, Kwanlin, on the traditional territory of, Champ of uh, Kwanlin Dunn First Nation and Ta'an Kuchin Council. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you. And so tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, I have a salon and day spas. There's eight staff that work here total, and we provide the full range of hair services and spa services. I've had my business for 12 years, but we just in the last two years did quite a large expansion. We're located inside the Best Western Gold Rush Inn. So the main part of our business is providing services to the public, but we also do some retail sales as well. Mm -hmm. And what have you learned about your business model over the last couple of months in this pandemic? Uh, it's really interesting because you feel like you have lots of different income streams and then when something like this happens, you realize that you don't. Um, you also realize about how important it is to diversify. So I've had some really neat experiences just kind of figuring out how to get through it and how I can kind of change things up so that I can figure out different ways to generate different ways to connect with uh, customers. Uh, revenue streams sort of give us a sense of what a, a salon like yours like what kind of revenue streams do you have what are you thinking about so we're like 90 percent service based so probably 90 percent of our income is generated by us working hands-on with the guest and then there's about 10 percent supplemental income that comes from just walk-in retail or retail that happens as a result of the service experience um, and it, it felt fairly diverse because we've got two different things going on, but then you realize once you're closed down and you don't have the storefront to sell the business and you aren't able to do the contact to sell the services, you're really limited. So what did you do? Um, I just kind of started to evaluate how could I expand on what we already do, but make it happen without having to have my hands on the client. A big part of our business too, aside from the um, building revenue part of it, is I feel like our business is really about building relationships with clients and building relationships with people. So I wanted to figure out how can I maintain and build those relationships without being able to see them in my service setting. So I started doing a lot of um, presentations online, connecting with the customers online. It was really well received, so it just kind of grew from there. Yeah, you were really active on social media through a lot of this, both on Instagram and Facebook. What did you learn about yourself as a business owner transitioning to that online space? Um, I, it's funny because I'm so social with work, so people always say that they can't believe this, but I'm more an introverted than an extroverted person. So it was really challenging for me to kind of make that leap, but it just showed me that. I'm willing to do what it takes and I actually really enjoyed it and it helped to kind of bring me out of my shell a little bit and break through that um, introversion a little bit and move a little bit more towards the extroverted side. Uh, any lessons that you'll take forward from sort of that period of, of business development into the future? Yeah, I feel like uh, when we were operating before, we always had really great connections with the guests when they were here, but outside of that, there wasn't a lot of connection. I think that was a deficiency in what we were providing before. So I definitely want to continue to keep the connection with the guests when they're not at my salon or not. You know, maybe there's some months that they can't afford to come in and get the service, but we still appreciate that they even came in once this year. So it's nice. And I want to keep that up to keep up the connection with the guest outside of just the physical interaction of when they come in. What did you learn about the back end of your business? A lot of entrepreneurs in this interview series have talked a little bit about their back end and, you know, recognizing their sort of online integration or sort of some of the systems and processes that were sort of ready for disruption. Oh, I learned so much. It was crazy. So there's lots of things that I've been meaning to do for a long time, but they kind of always get put on the back burner. And then I had the, t the time to really focus on those things and really expand on those things. So we've done a lot of like digital integration where we've got an app now. We've got um, Book Now feature on Facebook. We've 
um, migrated to a cloud version of our program. We're moving on to a bigger online presence with a new website. And all of those things just support and build what we've already made and make it so much stronger and so much uh, more wonderful and resilient. That's, I'm just like kind of listing all these things that you've done in my <laughs> head and I'm exhausted for you. <laughs> How have you sort of stayed grounded in all this? What's been your wellness practice to kind of keep you centered and going forward? Um, before this happened, I was working a lot and I wasn't spending that much time with my family. So the blessing in this whole situation was getting more time with my family. And part of that has been spending time outside in our backyard and going for bike rides. And it's been really wonderful just to have the time with my kids. And that's been my real grounding thing. I made a commitment that like when I'm spending the time with them, I'm spending the time with them. And I just have to take that work stuff and put it away for that hour or two. Mm. That's wise advice. Hard to do. <laughs> really hard. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, any sort of advice that's coming to mind for you for, for people who are entrepreneurs here in the territory who might be starting a new business right now or, or working in business? Um, just kind of keep going. Don't give up. It's scary. And it's like this whole situation can be really difficult. And I would say even at the beginning, like a little bit traumatizing because it's so, we've never experienced this before. So just keep going, accept all the help that you can find and reach out for all the help that you can find. I wouldn't have been able to get nearly half of the stuff done that I did without the supports that I found. Um, I reached out to Yukon College for the pivot program. I've had support from friends that have helped me with a lot of things. So just take the help where you can find it and keep going because this isn't going to last forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And have you had any sort of like major aha moments about your business or about yourself in this period of time? Um, Yeah, I think I, I, di I did. So I was kind of had a little bit of a shift of thinking before this whole situation happened, but it, this really kicked me into it. So I spend a lot of time as a service provider in my business. And I think to effectively run the business, I need to spend more time working on it versus in it. Mm. On it versus in it. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so it's, I think we talk about that a lot as entrepreneurs in the North, we're often like one person deep in what we do, right? Like as yeah. a caterer, I was, I was the cook. I was the one who made the big meals for a hundred people. And without me, there was nobody else to necessarily do that. And so, um, but it's hard to run a business when you're deep into it like that and doing the day to day. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's th those are big profound moments for us as entrepreneurs when we make those realizations. I think. Yeah. <laughs> And I have a fantastic team, so I feel more comfortable to to give up the reins a little bit and let them take over a little bit on the front lines so that I can support the back business. The back, the back end, that thing that yeah. we forget about. And then <laughs> when we get those moments to pause, we, we start working on them. And so yeah. what have you learned as a, as a team leader over the past couple of months? Um. Communication is really important, so I've tried to keep really uh, open lines of communication with my staff. I've seen how strong and resilient my staff are and how supportive they are, and they've been wonderful through this whole situation. I think I'm going to be really fortunate that all of my staff are going to return, and I haven't uh, lost any of them. So I, you're only as strong as your team, and the communication is really important even when you aren't able to communicate with each other, maybe on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And what have you learned about Yukoners and your clients? Oh, they're wonderful. So wonderful. They've been so supportive. I had people messaging me almost every day. And the way they supported me with like uh, attending my DIYs and purchasing the DIY kits and just the, the words of encouragement. I really love how Yukoners have got each other's back. And they're all about supporting local and making sure that we all get through this. And we really are all in it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, it's been a, a challenging time for all of us. It's like the messaging's changing all the time. We're, we're onboarding so much new information and new ways of being. Um, and I, I'm continually just amazed and so happy with, with how everybody's responding to it. And, yeah, and, and seeing business owners like you just sort of stepping up and, and finding, finding your opportunity to adapt to the situation. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Awesome. Any songs or things that have kind of books or things that have gotten you through that you'd recommend to other people? Uh, I really love anything with Brené Brown. She's amazing. Um, so the Dare to Lead, Rising Strong, like all of those are just absolutely amazing. Um, especially the Dare to Lead because it's a time where you have to feel brave to just leap off that cliff and try something different, transition and know that you can do it and it's terrifying and you don't know if it's going to work, but you got to try. Oh, 100%. I feel like mm -hmm. her recent podcasts have just been a, a real... Uh, grounding force for me i find i'm journaling about them and excited mm -hmm. to listen to them each week and um, yeah that uh, that idea in in one of the ones about anxiety we're sort of like we either freeze or we do and i'm like yeah. oh i'm a doer <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> just making sure that all my doing is directed in the right direction right <laughs> awesome well any any final thoughts anything else you want to add in amanda um, not that I can think of. Well, I think it's wonderful the way that um, our community came together and, and came up with the Business Advisory Council. And there's been so many wonderful supports for entrepreneurs with different subcommittees and committees. And it's been absolutely amazing to see how the business community has pulled together. People before that used to be, you know, maybe competitors and didn't really have relationships. Well, now they're holding each other up and they're making those connections and it's wonderful i forgot that you were on the business advisory council one of the subcommittees so that's wonderful that yeah. you, you added that in yeah. Um, yeah that's uh it's been really interesting to see all that come together and you're right i think it really is about collaboration even though as entrepreneurs we're we can be in competition against each other mm -hmm. it's competition that makes us um stronger in the yeah. end mm -hmm. amazing thanks amanda have a great day you're welcome <laughs> you too